So, in order to create a classification or regression models, we have to be aware of the two stages that we need. The first stage is the part of calibration in which we have an X matrix and we have a Y, this is with references and Y with references, okay? And we have to create a model in here. This is the, st is the stage of calibration. And then we can predict whatever we need to predict that is this Y value in our hypercube, okay? So these are the two stages that we have to, to face. So then in the concept of classification, classification, this X matrix should be formed by a spectra, consecutive spectra of the different classes we want to classify, class one, class two, class three, etc. Okay, then in this case, our Y reference will be created automatically in HyperTools as our dummy matrix if we need it, okay? Because we have methods like Simca in which we don't need it. Then we will create our model. And then we will predict whatever class we want to predict in our hypercube, okay? Going back to MATLAB, I have already created this X matrix is the one that is called X class, okay? And in this X class matrix, what we have is 789 rows. These rows, okay, in X class, 789 rows are dividing the four different classes, okay? This will be class a for the first plastic, we will do it in the plastics exercise, class B, class C, and class D. In such a way that the number of spectra I have for the first class is in this vector here, Y num class is 146, 146. For the second class is 224, 224, and so for okay so if we go to hypertools we open again hypertools then we can go directly to the classification tab and there are two ways of inputting our references from the x from a workspace or if we have an image that we can use as a calibration image we can use it i will show you both ways from x then we have to load X, as I said, is X class. Then we have to load the wavelengths. <clears throat> Here we are. And then we have the class name and size. Okay, in this case, I will open here, I will have MATLAB in display because it's gonna be easier. So how many? Four, because we have four plastics. The first one, A that will have size of 146. The second one, B of size 224. The third one, C of size 200. And the fourth one, D of size 219, accept done. Then coming back to HyperTools, this is already in HyperTools, we can apply any spectral cropping that we need or any pre-processing. Before in the exploration tab, we saw that uh, a good discrimination between the plastic could be obtained by using a simple pre-processing that is smoothing with seven of window and SMV. Okay. So we run it and we are pre-processing the data of the calibration stage, okay? So we will calibrate. Then in calibration, here in classification, we have PLSDA, support vector machines, Simca and KNN. I have to say that support vector machines only work for two classes, okay? So let's do a PLSDA model, for instance. Let's calculate. First, we have 
to check how many latent variables we need. So in centering, Venetian blinds, let's put only three sets of Venetian blinds cross-validation sets just to make it fast. Okay. There we are. So we can see clearly that with four latent variables, we have more than enough information in this model with mean centering, of course, and Venetian blinds three. So we calculate the model. There you are. So the first thing we have to do is to save it to the workspace. So it's PLSDA model. Okay, let's say it's PLSDA model. Okay, there was already one, but no problem. Here we have the confusion matrix, okay, for calibration and cross validation that we can put directly in Excel spreadsheet or whatever we need. And here we have some really nice plots that help us to understand if this classification model is good or not, okay? For instance, we can see in the x-axis here in this plot, we have the samples, and this is the calculation class for class one, this is for class two, class three, and class four. So it seems that it's a good model, perfect. But just for the sake of curiosity, we can, with the same setup, we can, for instance, calculate a Simca model, okay? We calculate it, like data mean centered, Venetian blinds three, we calculate. Okay, it takes a little bit more because you know that Simca is developing three different PCA models, okay? So it takes a little bit more of time. Okay, it's a lot of information, so it takes a little bit. There you are. So again, we have in display the settings. This is for class one. For class one, we need five latent variables. So in this case, it's principal components, of course. It's mean center the data. For the second class, we need one. It's very easy class, this one. For the third class, we also need one. Well, it's a really nice example, this one. And for the fourth one, we need four latent variables, okay? So mean centering, class modeling, we have different assignation criteria, okay? So many some blind, number of cross validation groups, three, and calculate. So then, now we are assembling the Simca model, okay? <clears throat> there you are. We save it into the workspace. So the, the confusion matrix that we can put it into the, into the Excel or whatever we need. And in this case, for instance, we have the loadings. And uh, here, one of the things that is nice to see is the hoteling versus the residuals for each one of the classes. So this is for class one. This is for class two. And, whoa, sorry, uh, the residual. There we are. So there you see the distribution of the classification samples, okay? So then this will allow me to create as many models as we need. Also, I can change the pre-processing if I need it, okay? Imagine that we want to make first derivative. The only thing I have to do is to change here for first derivative. Now, how do we predict? We go to the class predict and we load our image. We load the image non-preprocessed image because in the model there is the information already retrieved on how you have to pre-process this image to apply that model. So in image, we just need to load our sample. There it is. Here we are, our sample. And we can profit the fact that before we made a mask and we have it still in our workspace, so, for instance, it would be this prep mask, okay? 
and the wavelengths. With the wavelengths, of course, it's important to load the same wavelength vector as before, of course. And we load the model in this case. Let's start with PLSDA model and predict. There you are. This is the prediction. So as you can see, this is plastic A, plastic B, plastic C, and plastic D. And of course, we have some unassigned and some misclassifications. That's uh, quite normal, actually. OK, so we can save this prediction Okay, in our workspace, because afterwards, we can play with it. OK, and then now I can try to see what happens with the SIMCA model. Accept data and predict. There you are. It takes a little bit more because you have to check with three uh, PCA models that this uh, is uh, in SIMCA. Okay, there you are. This is the SIMCA, SIMCA model result. Okay, as before, A, B, C, D and unassigned. In this case, there are less unassigned. And you can see the unassigned are here in the edges of the plastic. So it makes a lot of sense, actually. So I can save this prediction for the 